Divrei Hayamim Bet, Second Chronicles, Chapter 26. Meanwhile, all the people of Yehuda had taken Uzi Yahu at the age of sixteen and made him king in place of his father Amatz Yahu. He recovered Ialot for Yehuda and rebuilt it. It was after that the king Amatz Yahu slept with his ancestors. Uzi Yahu was sixteen years old when he began his reign and he ruled for 52 years in Yerushalayim. His mother's name was Yakol Yahu, from Yerushalayim. He did what was right from Adonai's perspective, following the example of everything his father Amatz Yahu had done. He consulted God during the lifetime of Zakar Yahu, who understood visions of God, and as long as he consulted Adonai, God gave him success. He went out to fight the Pilishtim, breaking down the walls of Gat, Yavna, and Ashdod, and he built cities in the area of Ashdod and among the Pilishtim. God helped him against the Pilishtim, against the Arabs living in Gur Baal, and against the Meunim. The Amunim brought tribute to Uziyahu, and his fame spread abroad as far as the Egyptian frontier, since he kept growing stronger. Uziyahu built towers in Yerushalayim at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at Angle, and fortified them. He built towers in the desert and dug many cisterns because he had much livestock, likewise in the Shafela and the coastal plain. He had farmers and vineyard workers in the hills and in the fertile, fertile lands because he loved the soil. Uziyahu had a standing army of fit soldiers divided into units according to the census taken by the secretary Yiel and the officer Maasiya under the direction of Hanania, one of the king's officials. The total number of clan heads over these strong, brave men was 2,600. They directed a trained army of 307,500 fighting men, a strong force supporting the king in war against the enemy. Uziyahu equipped them the whole army with shields, spears, helmets, armor, bows, and sling stones. In Yerushalayim, he built devices designed by experts for the towers and angles from which to shoot arrows and lob large stones. His fame spread far and wide, for he was miraculously helped until he became strong. But when he was strong, he became arrogant, which caused him to become corrupt, so that he sinned against Adonai his God by going into the temple of Adonai, to burn incense on the incense altar. Azar Yahu the Kohen went, after, went in after him, and with him were eighty of Adonai's Kohanim, brave men. They stood up to Uzi Yahu the king. They told him, It isn't your job, Uzi Yahu, to burn incense to Adonai. The job of burning incense belongs to the Kohanim, the descendants of Aharon, who have been consecrated. Get out of the sanctuary. You have trespassed, and Adonai God will not honor you for this. This made Uzi Yahu angry as he stood there with a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense. And in his anger at the Kohanim, Tzara'at broke out on his forehead right in front of the Kohanim, in the house of Adonai, beside the altar for incense. Azar Yahu, the chief Kohen and all the Kohanim, stared at him. There he was, with Tzara'at on his forehead. Quickly they threw him out of there, and indeed he himself hurried to get out because Adonai had struck him. Uziyahu the king had Zazara'at until his dying day. He lived in a separate house because he had Zazara'at and was not allowed into the house of Adonai. Meanwhile, Yotam the king's son ran the king's household and was regent over the people of the land. Other activities of Uziyahu from beginning to end were recorded by Yeshayahu, the prophet, the son of Emots, so Uziyahu slept with his ancestors, and they buried him with his ancestors in the graveyard belonging to the kings, because they said he had Zara'at. Then Yotam, his son, took his place as king. End of Second Chronicles, chapter 26.